in play button that says run and everything runs, right? Um, please do it line by line. Otherwise, uh, um, uh, you will not figure out what, 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 the, what the lines mean, okay? Are there other conceptual questions about how channel steepness should be or can be calculated? Um, okay, so I would like to do, I would like to take it a step further. And the, the, the channel steepness is one way uh, uh, to identify what a channel looks like. Let's go back to that uh, original equation that we have had. Um, the original uh, equation uh, was write dz dt is equal to the uplift rate, sum k times a to the power of m times dz dx to the power of n, right? So um, uh, in steady state conditions, we set this to zero. This is area, this is slope. And then we solve for this k, essentially, right? This is the k that we are, that we are solving for. Um, uh, you could rewrite that equation um, uh, in a way that you make it uh, dependent of uh, x and t. So that uplift, uplift also uh, drainage area or area, um, and also that k, that, uh, that um, uh, erosion efficient coefficient, they may all change with space and time, meaning they may change along the profile, right? Clearly, you know, if you're a geologist, you realize that you have changing lithology going downstream, right? So we could rephrase that equation um, uh, and make u a function of x and t, right? Um, um, then we make k a function of x and t, um, and we have a a function of x and t, um, and then uh, we have our dz dx uh, that remains like this. So when we have that equation, so again, uh, uh, dz dt, dz uh, dt, um, uh, I'm not going into the entire detail. In the L. Neely paper that I put on the GitHub, there is a more detailed derivative. Um, um, right now, in the, in the previous step, we solved this um, equation by taking, by using the slope, by essentially taking the slope of the terrain. Um, you could take a different approach and say that you are integrating this equation instead of taking the derivative, right? So we could integrate this um, uh, with respect to distance along the channel. So in other words, we are not taking the slope of the channel, we are taking, we are integrating it along, along the channel. So uh, if we have our zx, then that is the elevation of the channel. So if we're integrating uh, uh, this guy, um, uh, um, then we have our, oh, you know what? Let me, let me put the, the integral first. Then no, no, let us do this. U over K times A zero. Um, so we have, um, uh, uh, we can rephrase this, we can reshape uh, this equation, and uh, we can essentially uh, generate an integral. This is our chi. Um, this is the integral of a base level to x. So we are starting at the bottom of the channel, and we are going up the channel, and we are taking the integral of our a0 AX, so we are essentially using the drainage area as an integration factor along, uh, along the channel. So we are essentially saying that instead of taking uh, uh, the slope as we did before, we are walking up the channel and we are normalizing uh, by uh, the drainage area. So if we normalize by the drainage area, um, 
uh, we have uh, no derivative here anymore, right? We have taken that dx out and we take the drainage area as a, um, as a, as a component. And that is uh, our chai. Our chai uh, allows us uh, to change the framework. We are now having chai units, which is essentially uh, the drainage area unit. So we are saying that um, on average, or a catchment should look like this, if this is distance and height, our river profile, right? And, and we can use that um, uh, exponential form. This is essentially an exponential form that when we take uh, the logarithm of distance, we would have a line, right? So if we have a log distance, we have a line because it's an exponential uh, uh, form. We can do the same uh, with our drainage area. And we can um, essentially say on a, on a catchment, if we have chai units, a catchment, a normal catchment should follow a line in chai units. Um, and this is, again, uh, our height. Um, if we have integrated a long area, so if we go upstream um, a, a profile and we consider area um, um, and we integrate over area, uh, then with increasing area, we're increasing the height and, and then we don't need to worry about slope anymore. Yeah? I don't want to go through the details of the uh, derivative. It is pointed out in the, in the PDF file, so you can, uh, you can look at it. But I just wanted to point out that instead of uh, looking at uh, uh, the derivative, uh, we can uh, look at the integral of it, and that would allow us to um, uh, essentially compare everything uh, to a reference line. And this reference line, um, uh, uh, the, the different reference line would essentially be equivalent to different uh, uh, setters, okay? So um, a different slope of a different reference line would be a different setter. So that's essentially a, a change in curvature, meaning that, you know, when you walk up, if you have a, a, a fairly flat channel, it means that um, you're not changing height much when you go up. If you're changing height much when you go up, it means you have a very curved channel, right? So then, uh, so that, that means that you have a steeper curve here. So that, that angle that you see here is essentially your, uh, uh, your setter, right? That, that slope that we determined in a log area log plot, slope plot can now be determined in a linear plot. And the big difference is that we don't need to do a power law fitting in log area log spo uh, slope space, which is really, really tricky, as you have seen all the, you know, the, the noise that is in there. We can now fit a slope to a linear space because we have uh, taken into account the drainage area. So it's just a little numerical uh, 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 step or analytical steps that you do in order to uh, improve the uh, numerical accurateness, accurateness. Because the other, the other option of determining this uh, um, uh, setter is log area versus log slope. And uh, that, first of all, is very noisy. And second of all, you need to derive the slope from a digital elevation model. And every digital elevation model is uncertain, has errors in it, has noise. And taking the slope of noise just magnifies, amplifies the noise. So you end up having uh, lots of noise in here. And you're fitting something through log log, which is tricky anyway, because you have to deal with power laws. Instead of doing this, you can integrate this equation, and then you have a linear factor, which is related to drainage area, and you have height on the y-axis. So you can directly take the elevation from your DEM, and you don't have to take the derivative, which is usually a nice thing when you especially have noisy DEMs. For our example here for this um, Santa Cruz Island, I mean, we have a really nice DEM here. So. It wouldn't play, make that much of a difference. But um, uh, it's still a nice thing to have that you can look at the height directly as long as you integrate uh, uh, over drainage area. OK? So um, the, the whole analysis uh, is called usually chai analysis 
or uh, a chi plot. Okay? Um, so that's just the name of that Greek letter, okay? And um, essentially what we, will, what we will do, we will perform this analysis um, and I'm not going through the same details as we did uh, before. I just wanted to show you that um, we can uh, generate a chi plot um, from our river file, from the DEM, and from the drainage area. And uh, they would look like this. And I would like to spend some time uh, uh, looking at this plot and explaining it. So now we see, again, every uh, stream that we have. Oh, let me do this. Oh, hold on. I'm going to plot uh, I'm going to plot uh, so let's look at this. Um, uh, on the left hand side, we see the profiles, okay? So these are our longitudinal profiles. The trunk stream here is shown with the blue line, right? So these are our profiles. Now, let's do that transformation of the x-axis by area. So we are integrating uh, with respect to area. So that means that if we would have an exponential function here, that would become a perfect line because we're integrating with respect to area. So um, that distance upstream units becomes the chi unit, which is essentially an integration of the area. So ideally, if you have a perfectly exponential river profile, you would have a straight line in here. It's shown by that, uh, uh, it's shown by that uh, blue line in here. So this is uh, the average perfect profile. Um, you have on the y-axis elevation, you have elevation here too. And what you see here is that um, uh, th this black line is the main stem or the trunk stream. Okay, So that black line corresponds uh, to the trunk stream. And what you see here is you see uh, um, deviation from the uh, expected exponential function. So here, the, uh, here is a lower bend. And here is a slightly upper bend in, 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 your, in your black line. So that means um, in some cases the channel is steeper than it's supposed to be. And in other cases it's less steep or the other way around. Above means it's less, uh, above means it's steeper than it's supposed to be. And below means it's less steep than it's supposed to be. So those deviations from the line, they, they essentially tell you too steep and too, uh, too shallow sections. So you can directly, from this linear plot, you can di directly derive uh, if, uh, uh, if, uh, if a channel is too steep uh, or, or not steep enough. So you can um, use these also for uh, nick points detection, for example. So that's what people, people have been doing. They look if there's the chi plot um, is uh, differencing from a... From a uh, a line, then you know that it's uh, that you have um, um, uh, uh, that you have nick points in there. Um, the nice thing is by fitting a line. So this blue line is the best fit uh, to the uh, trunk stream, to the black line. Um, we also get the setter value, right? So we can determine the setter value from the chi plot. So by fitting this line. This line now, the blue line, we have determined uh, the, uh, the, the setter value. And if we look at our uh, setter value, so we can access the setter value with uh, CMMN is the setter value. The setter value uh, uh, determined from the chi plot is different than what we did in the log area log plot uh, fitting. Keep in mind, uh, for this 
fit, we can use every single point. Here we are using all 500 points or whatever the length is of our, of our stream profile. Whereas when we do the log area log slope plot, we use log bins, so we fit maybe to 80 values or something like this. So um, usually uh, a much more robust way of determining m over n uh, is through a chi plot and not through that log area log slope plot. So, you can also phrase it this way. Five years ago, everybody was doing log area, log slope plots. Now people try to move towards the chi plots because it's a little more robust, the analysis. And I mean, theoretically, you should get the same results. Theoretically, uh, it should all tell you how, uh, how concave a river is. But in reality, this analysis is a little more robust because you don't have to take the slope. Uh, of the of the DEM first, and you don't have to do uh, a log linear regression. Uh, you can do a direct uh, linear regression in in in, in the chi plot, and of course uh, you can uh, uh, also determine uh, the uh, the KS value. Yeah, so the KS value um, uh, then uh, uh, is is essentially the equivalent. Oops. The equivalent to the uh, to the intercept that we did before. <coughs> yeah. Chi uh, has unit of meter. What does it mean? Any physical meaning? Not really. Um, it, I mean, it's in, integ integrated with respect to area. I mean, uh, it, it, it it it's actually I wouldn't. I wouldn't say. I I, I would think about it. I would think about it in, in units of uh, 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 chai. You know, think about it that you're walking up the stream. Um, so it's a combination of drainage area and lengths along the stream. I mean, yes, it is units of meters, but it is not in our spatial sense meters. It is more. Uh, 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 a chai distance, yeah? Most of the tributaries are having chai values lesser than the mean, mean blue line. Yeah. Most of the... Most, you say most of it is, is above, let me see. <coughs> no. Most of, the, uh, most of the tributaries are lesser values than blue line. Uh, uh, huh, um, the way I have performed this analysis, I have fitted only to the main stem. So I have, when I when I fit the sky, the, the chi value, um, I uh, for this particular example, I'm fitting it to the trunk stream because I say, uh, you know, the, the little channels they may be influenced by other things. Uh, I just want to have um, the main stem. So. Uh, the way I perform this fit here is, is um, fitting it uh, to the trunk stream. Um, you're right, we could fit it to all available uh, data points. And this is shown here. So let me see. I'm putting both out. So, uh, so these are two independent plots. One is a plot where I only fit it to the trunk stream, which I prefer to do. And this is a plot where everything ha every channel has been fitted. And you see that this line uh, has a much lower slope, OK? So here, everything has been uh, has fitted. And here, only the trunk stream has, uh, has been fitted. And I, you know, I suggest to use the trunk stream. Trunk stream is mainstream, right? You say what? Trunk stream is mainstream. Main. Main, main channel. Yes. So, yeah. you, so here the thick line is a trunk stream? The, a no, the, the black line, the thick black line is a trunk stream. And the uh, blue line is the best fit. The blue line uh, uh, is the best fit that gives you uh, the m over n or the setter. The slope of that line is the m over n. Lines are referring to the trunk stream in this figure. Uh, I mean, I mean, it you know, 
this this plot is the same this plot is the same as this guy except that it's in in chi space right all the all these are all the trunk streams right they all come in uh, into the uh, uh, into the trunk stream this is this black line here is a, is a trunk stream right so you have a few if you look at it you have a few channels that are much longer those guys they go parallel and go long uh, but most of the channels are relatively short there are only a few channels that have the same the same lengths okay, right okay 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 uh, can we distinguish uh, in this chai plot where is this blue line is it possible can can we distinguish can, can can we distinguish in the chai plot this blue line this blue line here this 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 blue line yeah but can you distinguish here where is the blue line here it's the black line it's the main stem this, this is the black line this is the main stem yeah it's the trunk stream yeah the black line is a trunk stream in chi coordinates right okay. so you know you you see you see the little bumps that are in here you see that big guy in here right um um uh, those are the uh, those are the bumps uh, that you see uh, that you see in this line that's that's this line it's just in a different coordinate uh, uh, system uh, okay so so this guy here uh. look at the height of it it's 100 meters height right this is at 100 meters height this is where you you know i think we all would agree something is happening here yes. right mm -hmm. so if we look at at our chi plot at 100 meters high this is where uh, we have that kink in our in our chi plot you know so we clearly see that this kink is being displayed in this fashion so here um uh, uh, below we you know here the, the channel gets steeper above the line it's steeper than average below the line uh, uh, it's shallower right so this is this is what happens exactly at that yeah. at that bump so yeah. this bump uh, is in that sense a nick point yeah okay and uh, the maximum all the these uh, tributaries they are uh, lesser steeper here right this is this is indicating less steep because this is this below the is is it, is it like that i don't, I don't know uh, why all uh, th these are indicating th 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 these things or is it this is indicating this thing is it like that uh, now these are, these are these are all the shorter rivers these these are cheaper uh, these are less ste steeper. these are steeper than the than the main stem at that part uh, but we wouldn't want to use those for fitting because we would only fit over 200 meter links and if we fit over the trunk stream we fit over uh, 500 pixels so we prefer to uh, uh, to fit over over the trunk stream so all the streams below this uh, blue line are less steeper than the main stream. Well, let's think about it. Are they steeper or are they not steeper? What 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 is the what is the what is the plot saying? So they are less steeper. Why why would they be uh, why would they be less steep? M by n ratio. I mean, if we think about this as a distance unit and this as a height unit, right? If we go along this channel, if we have less elevation gain, it usually means it's less steep, right? Yes, they will be less steep. The, um, if I find some of the streams below this uh, fit line. Exactly, they are less steep, exactly. Okay. I'm sorry, I said it. Uh, th these channels are in this, in this framework, they are less steep. And these processes, uh, we are assuming steady state. They what? Steady state. All the <coughs> processes are happening in steady state. We are analyzing these plots for steady state. Okay. So uh, in steady state, we are uh, we are observing that there is a uh, change in gradient. Oh. <laughs> there is a change in gradient. Uh, there is a kink uh, where this river profile is going below that blue line. Yes, this part. That is that is this uh, that kink, and here is another one, right? Here is another one. Here is another kink, and that kink 
is that midpoint in here. You know, so here's another bend. If you look at it closely, okay. this guy is bending this way, right? So you see, see this see bend see. here. That is this, uh, uh, this other bend uh, over there. So, so keep in mind that this, these chai units, I know that you asked the question within meters and people like to think uh, as being in, in meters, but uh, you may get confused by it because it's compressing things by, by distance. Meaning that if you look at the chai, that's why I don't like to think in chai as meters. So, um, you know, here we have a two meter, 200 meter distance, and then we have another 300 meters left. But if we look at our longitudinal profile, Right, I would say three fourths of the length is actually here, and then only a small part is here. And part of this reason is because we're integrating an e function, meaning that an e function, an exponential function, is rapidly changing here at this part. Right, so in order to stretch this out, you need to make this much, much longer. So that, that part um, uh, is being stretched out more in order to make it linear, right? In order to, uh, to make this a linear chai plot. So this is why I dislike to think about chai units as units of meters, because it's units of meters maybe along the channel, and then when the channel is strengthened, but it's not units of meters in our spatial, in our spatial sense. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so keep in mind that, you, with that we're integrating an E function. So that distance here becomes a much longer distance in chai space. Okay. So. so what is this A0? Uh, is this channel initiation parameter? Uh, A0 is a reference area, and usually you set it to 1e e to the 6 as 1 square kilometer. It's just an. Um, it's just a reference area that you reference your, your data to. So, so basically, uh, how, irrespective of the so irrespective of the channel, uh, channel size, let, uh, so let's say I'm analyzing some uh, 1,000 square, square kilometer area channel, or maybe 10,000, 20,000 uh, square, square kilometer channel. So in that case, in both the cases, since this is channel initiation parameter, so that one square kilometer A0 remains fixed. I'm not entirely certain that I understand this, but this is just a constant. This is just a constant you're just adding or subtracting. You can set this, I just conveniently set it to one square kilometer, but you can also set it to 10,000 square meters. Um, it's, it's, it's just it's just a constant uh, uh, factor that you are that you're adding or subtracting here. So, uh, is there any physical meaning like it signifies some hill slope uh, processes? There, it, like it, it is not. It's not similar. You know, when we, we talked about the channel has before, it has nothing to do with that. Okay. It, it it's just a it's just a reference uh, uh, drainage area, and often you set it to one square kilometer. Okay. It does not have. A we're not talking about channel hats or something here. It's, it's a, it has a different, it has a different meaning. Yeah. So your, your KSN, I'm sorry, your steepness or your M over N value would not change if you change, if you change this. Yeah. The A zero. Okay. So. Yeah. I, so I, I have another query here. Uh, uh, can we able to suppose there is a tributary here which is very very steep and can we able to find this tributary here uh, in this chai plot and can we able to distinguish which tributary is show, is showing very steep uh, steepness well i mean you 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 know you can, you can analyze individual catchments. You don't have to do the whole thing. Um, for educational purpose now, I did the whole thing. Uh, but of course, when you do an analysis, when you want to publish something, when you want to make it uh, scientifically sound, uh, you certainly want to look at the individual tributaries, mm -hmm. like we talked about before, about different lithologies. Yes, I certainly would make sure to pull out some of those streams and look at them individually, not, not in that, in that entire, entire plot here. Okay. You know, because you know, here in this plot, you already see there's a bunch of streams that is fairly, uh, fairly steep, 
And then there are other streams that are a little shallower, right? And that tells me that you have different concavities, right? This guy, this guy, uh, and this guy, and this guy, they all have fairly low concavity. Uh, 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 um, uh, fair, well, they have higher concavities than the others. The others look more like a, like a line, right? So that tells me that uh, there's something going on that may have to do with lithology. So I, I would make certain that I try to separate out uh, those catchments, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if I'm correct, is this tributaries uh, which seems to me very steep are representing here? Or uh, yeah, like yeah. Those those should be those should be the the same, and and they they seem to be steeper than the um, main trunk, and they are also above uh, uh, the main stem. So you know, so as we said before, the lines below are less steep, the lines above are steeper, and so those guys are steeper than the main stem, and I would say that those guys here are steeper than the main stem. Those blue lines are steeper than the main stem. So that's why they plot uh, above here. Okay. So then, if this is the case, then if something is, uh, some tributary is here, which is very steep, so I, I should expect something here, right? Again, what was that? If, uh, if uh, one tributary which is here, in this point, here, which is very steep. So am I expecting this thing somewhere here? Or this plot will be somewhere here? Or, or some, I don't know where, where it will be. It, it, so all, all these things are here, so they are here. It is, it is okay, but if something is here very steep, am I expecting well, something here? Because uh, this is the point where it is changing, and this is the point where it is changing here also. Right, but keep in mind, here we are at a different chai unit, right? So um, we are essentially assuming that those channels down here, um, they behave like an E-function at the tail, at the, at the end of it. So we are taking those channels here, and we are stretching them out for a long time. So we're making them less steep. That's why they are plotting, uh, uh, plotting below. Whereas here, those guys, um, uh, are in, in that part of the uh, integration factor. And so we are almost, you know, we are making, so the, the reason why they plot below here is because they enter the channel in the lower part, in the lower section. We would not expect those to be here. We would expect them uh, to be yeah, up there. Correct, correct. And so again, I, maybe I shouldn't even plot at this. Maybe I should just have plotted the, the trunk steam. I think the, the tributary is maybe confusing, but you know, the, key, the key thing here is that this guy, this curve, um, is, is warped, right? The, the black curve. And it is warped because it is uh, experiencing uh, um, a, um, a nick point here, right? And, and, and um, uh, there are several other, other curves in there. Okay? Yeah, yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, if, if, if you look at this closely, um, you know, you can see it in this space, but I would almost say that the slope here is a little lower uh, compared to other sections. And this is why you have this upward, up, up welling in here, right? So this is, this is essentially um, uh, also a slope, a longer wavelength slope change. You see the, the, the blue line in here. Uh, you see that this is a little above the blue line and here this is below the blue line. This, this warping you identify very lightly, very lightly in there too, yeah? Um, okay, um, my suggestion now is, um, No, no, I, I, no, I, I prefer that. Uh, um, uh, um, okay. Um, you know, we could spend a whole week only talking about chai. Uh, there is no way that we can cover it all, all in, in, in one hour. There is no way. Um, my suggestion is um, that we would try to identify a region of interest in the Himalaya, for example, and we would do the same analysis within 30 meter DEM. Because my... Uh, thinking is that not many will have access to a one meter DEM, that probably most of our uh, digital elevation models that you are working with are rather in the 30 meter realm, right? So, um, uh, so let's see if we can 
uh, generate a, a meaningful, or if we can extract a meaningful DEM from um, from uh, the Himalayas. And what I'm doing now is I have prepared um, a DEM for a larger area. Mm -hmm. Which is, what is the criteria you're taking for plotting the main trunk? I mean, just how you're defining that this is the main trunk. The longest, the longest stream. But there are streams which can be longest? <laughs> There's only one longest stream. Okay. It has to be, you know, there only has to be, there, there has to be one, one longest stream. So if you, uh, the main stem, uh, you can think about it this way. When you start, when you at the outlet, and you start walking upstream. Every time you come to a junction, you go along the junction with the highest flow accumulation. And you do that every time you come to a junction. And this way, eventually, you find uh, uh, the main stem. So it's always uh, the highest flow accumulation. And you start at the outlet. You start at the outlet, and you end up walking backwards. Um, okay, so what I'm showing here is the digital elevation model of um, uh, of the Himalaya, right? The Western Himalaya. And so the thing is, this is a 30 meter DEM. The thing is, is that uh, uh, the DEM can't be too big, otherwise we will be waiting hours till uh, the computation is done, right? So uh, for example, uh, uh, you know, I would have liked to do the Sutledge Valley, but the Sutledge Valley is the third largest river of the Himalaya, and we will be sitting here for a while just waiting for uh, the results. Um, uh, we, could, uh, we could do uh, uh, here the, the Ganges, what we want to do with this area here. Um, uh, or should we do the smaller... Uh, uh, Tones Yamuna here, down here. Uh, you know what? Let's do the Ganges because it has glacial, glaciers in it, and it's, 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 I think it's a cool thing. I don't know. So I should say uh, the, the, uh, this is the SOTM. Let me just speak a few sentences about the digital elevation models. I will put this uh, uh, online here too. Um, let me just see if I can... Uh, markdown preview, okay. So here, uh, I'm putting this online, but the idea is that um, that uh, one of the more useful DEMs, and we can talk about this uh, for a long time, uh, is a reprocessed NASA DEM. So the NASA has reprocessed their original SOTM data, and they have merged it with ISAT data. Um, and they reprocessed it to 30 meters. Um, this has, was done last year. Um, uh, this is called the NASA DEM. They just call it the NASA DEM, you know? You think that's the only DEM in the world. That's why they call it the NASA DEM. I thought it was ridiculous, but anyway. Um, uh, uh, it's a fairly useful DEM. And the nice thing is that they uh, have used the same GUI than the Tandem X DEM. So if you have Tandem X data or ISET data, they all they are all in the same GUI. So it's nice to be in one reference frame. Um, there is an older data set derived from the SOTM that has been hydrologically corrected with carved channels. Um, this is called the hydrosheds, uh, sheds from watershed, right? Um, this is a useful one if you, for example, want to do global analysis and you don't want to do the flow accumulation yourself, okay? So therefore, that's what it's useful for. Um, uh, you know, we talked about the newest Aster GDM version, uh, the version 3. That's another thing that we could look at. Maybe we could download this at the very end too. Um, and then there is also data from the ALOS sensor, um, but we are not putting this up. Right now, we stay with a, 
uh, uh, SRTM data uh, from NASA, okay? Um, and you can download this, and it's usually fairly uh, nice to work with. So I have downloaded a larger tile of it. They usually come in one by one degree tiles, and you can download them individually. Uh, I stitched them together, and I have reprojected them already to UTM coordinates. So all of this is in UTM coordinates, in UTM 46 North in WGS 84, and I am now uh, uh, generating a, a, a shapefile uh, that I'm calling a clip. I'm calling this uh, Janji's clip, and I am uh, editing this shapefile, um, and I am going to uh, just click the uh, the, the bound, I just want to make sure that I have the full catchment, not that I'm missing something. Ah, that will be pretty big. I just don't want to sit here for hours waiting for the... So, uh, I'm using... I'm just, I now, I'm now clipping out this area, and let me do one thing here, I'm saving this, I'm making another, uh, uh, and I'm just calling it Tones Yamuna, Yamuna clip, so are you familiar with uh, using QGIS for this, it's, it's you know, usually pretty pretty straightforward. And now I'm clicking here the... Okay. Let's save this. And... Hold on, I'm coloring this with red. Okay, so here we have um, two polygons. Uh, I'm, I'm clipping them by the raster extraction, clip raster by mask layer. And the input layer is, of course, our DEM. Here I'm using the tones river. Um, uh, this remains all the same, and I'm usually setting uh, a, a high compression so that the output G, uh, um, the outputting file becomes uh, fairly small. And I want to save this uh, to a file, and I'm going to save it um, in here. Tones Yamuna uh, SRTM1 30 meter UTM. Uh, to, uh, okay, let's see what this does. This in, these are 6,300 times 4,800 pixels. I think we can probably live with it. This looks actually pretty cool. And then let's clip. Let's, my, my worry is that the Janji's clip will be too big. So that's why I created the second one, okay? I, of course, would prefer to do the Janji's, but... Um, um, that is 9,500 times 7,000 lines, so that's almost twice as big. Uh, so let's look at the file size of those guys. Oh, where did I, where did I save them to? 
Okay, I think Uh, so if you now navigate uh, to the um, uh, the GitHub web page, I think those two files should be in the MATLAB toolbox folder. And we have one DEM that is 17 megabytes, the other one is 38. Um, uh, we could work with either one. Uh, maybe we start out with the tones, tones Yamuna. And then we can look at the Janges after. Uh, so uh, I, what I'm doing is I'm copying this on this jump drive. You can go to the GitHub folder and download it. I don't know how fast it is. Uh, if this is too slow, then Is it working out with the download, or is it too slow? It's working. Good, good, good. So then, then I. So I'm putting them in a folder called Northwestern or Northwest Himalaya, and uh, I'm going to use pretty much the same uh, codes that I used for the um, uh, for the uh, Santa Cruz Island. And my suggestion is that we that I'm not going to put this code online. That you will. Uh, essentially work with the Santa Cruz Island file, but you just replace uh, uh, the file names and then we work our way uh, uh, through there. Um, I think that uh, there has been an issue with at least one person uh, loading the DS. So what I'm doing is I'm going to quickly create the um, flow accumulation files, and I'm saving it to the stick, because I think at least one person may have issue uh, loading, loading the TIFF file. And if you have a MATLAB matrix, then you just copy it from this. Um, We'll take a second, hold on. Contains the MATLAB file. You may <laughs> you may want to use that. Uh, then. Um, so you have seen what I've been doing. You know, so the idea is that uh, we now spend half an hour 
or so trying to figure this out. Um, um, I'm happy to help you here and there, but I don't think it helps you much if I uh, do everything up here. Um, uh, you see what I've, what, I've, what, I've doing so, what I've done so far. I have um, generated or I have loaded in the uh, DEM, and the first thing that we usually do is we check that it looks good. This is what I just loaded in. And I think, uh, uh, oh, look at we even have the bath bar on it. Nice. Um, this is a bath bar river that flows into the Sutledge. So this is one part of the Sutledge. Um, this is the Tones and Yamuna River. And here would be the Ganges River. And we will be focusing on those both rivers. Um, uh, they are fully covered by this DEM, right? So we want to use the k-largest component again to essentially only extract those, and in the end, some of those get, get thrown away, yeah? So the first thing we need to do when we do the fill command, and then we should look at the flow accumulation to make sure that this filling has worked out properly um, and that uh, uh, we uh, properly drain, uh, drain the landscape. Yeah, nice. Nice. I think the workspace was that big. 
I do it again. I'm under the same when I try to I can import it. The TFW problem is there. <coughs> yeah. Uh, it's uh, size different size, so it, it didn't didn't uh, copy properly. Thank you. 
The Tones Parbati River. This is the Parbati, this is the Tones, and this is the Yamuna River. Okay? So, because we have included both, 
Now, if we do the k largest component, this is part of the largest component, right? Um, and if we then plot the stream of only this largest component of this network, you know, you essentially see um, one stream uh, that looks like this, and then the main stem like this. This is because we are plotting Tones and Yamuna in the same plot here. And I would argue that it's maybe not very useful, right? Because these are two, two independent big, uh, big rivers. Um, so what I have done in order to separate those out, in order to separate out um, uh, the tones and th or the tones first, I have uh, I have zoomed in here. I have zoomed into this area and identified uh, the uh, uh, the x y z or the x y coordinates of the river that comes in here. Right? I click on this river. This is my UTM coordinate. So I'm essentially, I'm essentially getting the point where those uh, 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 flow together. So I'm clicking, getting this point, and then in the code, and no worries, I put this on GitHub again, in the code, I'm taking that coordinate system, or I'm taking that coordinate, I'm telling MATLAB to make sure that this coordinate really lies on a river, and then I'm, then I'm using the command uh, drainage basin, with these coordinates to extract a single catchment. So I'm now extracting only the tone server, and the Yamuna uh, is flowing in the other direction. So I'm, I'm only extracting the tones river, and then, I've, then I can replot this figure. And now you see I'm only plotting the one side of the catchment, okay? Now I'm only plotting the tones and not the Yamuna anymore. And this river profile has slightly changed and doesn't have gazillions of small channels anymore. It's, it has, a, has fewer channels. And now in the next step, you know, we essentially see, he, we see the tones uh, uh, and the Parbati. That's another uh, tributary there, right? So. We, would, we could split this up further, but right now uh, we are seeing the longest continuous stream. Um, uh, and that, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, is going up in here. Okay? And this is essentially the drainage divide to the Baspa, to the, to the uh, Sutlitch Valley. Okay? And, and these are the catchments which are also uh, uh, glaciated in the upper part. So that's a nice... A long, long profile. You see that the distance now. We are here. We are talking uh, about more than 180 kilometers. So this is a really, really big, long distance that we are that we are talking about. Yeah. Are you guys comfortable getting to this point, or uh, sh sh should we talk about this? Are you comfortable doing the flow, the filling, the flow accumulate, the flow direction, flow accumulation, and so on? Um, that clicking part that I just demonstrated is something that we that I put on GitHub so that you will be able to subdivide uh, your catchments. You know, someone asked about other catchments. You could now also say, um, you know, now you could. I have this point and I'm not using it. <laughs> so you know, you could now go up to here and only ex uh, extract the parbati, and then you have the other channel on the on the other side. You could do this now too. Okay. But right now, we are looking at the, at the whole thing. And as the next step, uh, you would uh, calculate the minimum approach again. And then you would uh, look at um, the, now I'm plotting all data. It's not very useful. I just wanted to, uh, <coughs> to show you that this gets pretty ugly at a certain point uh, uh, just because you end up uh, having many data points. And actually, we would need to uh, filter these data. So that's why I want to talk about this for a second. Um, so what you see here is one plot with Tones Yamuna all data uh, for the setter that has been derived from the uh, uh, fitting. So the fitting derives minus 0.42. And uh, the, uh, if I force it to be uh, minus 0.45, uh, 
uh, I get, you know, of course I get two different KS values because the slope, the slope is different, right? Um, but but here, here's a problem, and the problem is that um, when we are doing the log binning at large drainage areas, here we are talking about a 10 to the 9 is a thousand square kilometer, 10 to the 10 is 10, uh, 10,000 square kilometers, we only have a few pixels in those. There are only a few cells in the entire DEM with that, uh, with that drainage area. So if there are a couple of pixels that are noisy or that have abnormally low slope, your uh, bin gets pulled down. So you see the binning goes down here. Even so, the bulk of the data is up here. And if I would eyeball this somehow, I probably would fit the curve a little higher, right? I would probably, you know, not that I'm able to regress a million points, but you know, I probably would draw the line somewhere through here. And the reason why all of those points are down is because we have uh, those really low slope areas in here. And now we may uh, uh, ask ourselves, does it make sense to have slopes that are 10 to the minus 3? Um, uh, uh, think about it. 10 to the minus 3, what does that mean? Um, 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 so if I have a slope of ten of one times ten to the minus three meter per meter, what does that mean? If 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 you would uh, translate this, you know, I mean, think about rise over run. This is the distance, and and this is the drop. What would that what would that slope mean? For one meter distance, what would be the, the drop? One millimeter, exactly. If we now say that we have a 30 meter cell um, and we have a slope of uh, 10 to the minus 3, what is, what is the, the drop here? We just have to multiply this by 30, right? Even I can do that. So here we are at 30 uh, um, uh, millimeters. Now, uh, can an SOTM DEM derive, uh, distinguish between 30 millimeters of adjacent cells, 30 centimeters? Um, I'm sorry, 0.3 centimeters? I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily think so. So, um, you know, this would fall for me into the category of noise. If I see a slope of 10 to the minus 3, in, in that DEM, this is noise. In a lighter DEM, different story. In a, in a DEM like this, this is noise. So what would be an appropriate uh, uh, slope, you think? So if I have a 30-meter cell, and if I have a step down, um, what, is the, what do you think uh, is the equivalent of a one-meter step? If I have a 30-meter slope, what would be the... Uh, I'm sorry, if I have a 30-meter grid cell size, what is the... Uh, elevation drop of one meter to the next cell. What is the equivalent slope of this? What was it? One times ten to the minus two. Did you say? Hmm. Again, 10 to the minus? Uh, it, will be, it will be 1 meter divided by 30 meters. Right, and I want to know what, what's the slope. The, it will be 3.33 into 10 to the power minus 1. 10 to the minus 1? Yeah, 3.33. Yeah, let's just say 10 to the minus 1. Um, uh, 0 .3. Uh, okay, so that's... So that is uh, that is um, uh, one 
you know, one ballpark number, we can roughly approximately, you know, we could also use MATLAB, right? We could ask MATLAB, what is 30 divided by one, or what is the tangent of 30, you know, that's, that's what we have MATLAB for, but. Um, uh, so I just wanted to get to the point, 10 to the minus one is a ballpark number, uh, uh, that our data definitely can uh, derive. Maybe we can even do less than a meter. And think about it this way. We are looking not only at single slopes, at adjacent slope. Um, uh, we are deriving slopes, or we can derive slopes over the equivalent of, for example, 10 adjacent pixels. So then we would not have um, 30 meter, but a 300 meter, pix a 300 meter distance for 10 pixels. And if we then have the drop of one meter, we are talking to about 10 to the minus two, right? So this is roughly, so somewhere between 10 to the minus two and 10 to the minus one is our, you know, realistic range that we can determine the slopes for this kind of a DEM. So um, many of those points that we see down here, um, uh, they are, uh, uh, they are slope related. So I, you know, I don't trust them. I would not trust them. So um, I would uh, probably, I would suggest to remove everything uh, below either 10 to the minus two or five times 10 to the minus three. So you want to remove all of those slopes below here so that this line is not influenced by those points down here. So that, that essentially those log bins would move up a little, okay? So that's, that's you know, one of the things that you realize by looking at these data and saying, hey, the reason why this regression is so far down here is because of those points and those log bins uh, are influenced by those low slope areas, but those low slope areas are not real. You know, these are essentially the flat parts that are, you know, that, that are not very well depicted in the DEM anyway. So I probably would uh, uh, remove them. So. You know, so you can't start interpreting this uh, uh, diagram directly because you need to filter the slopes first. Yeah. So, um, question: What should, should we do this together? Would you like to work a little on yourself? Uh, what, what What do you think is the best? You want to work a little on it yourself? Let's do this. Okay.